most of you probably know us through our thematic shows in which we try to connect to complex problems of everyday life through art and design. Um, we're digging for more alternative, maybe more deeper meanings. And that's exactly what we're aiming for as well in this series of interviews. Yesterday, Jan discussed um, design and future thinking, or maybe I should say future facilitating, with speculative designer Tobias Revel. Tomorrow we're going to talk about mentorship and collaboration, the modus operandi, I could say, for uh, the Bio 50 bi design biennial in Ljubljana. And on Friday we're going to um, tackle the question what Milan means for the evolution of design discourse and critique. But today Jan is going to discuss with Joseph what the practice of exhibiting might mean and more concretely what the idea of a European design parliament a manifesta for design might mean. These talks are uh, having a long tail. Um, they are not just by coincidence here. They are really a part of a research that we as Z33 are instigating now uh, and trying to uh, make also public instead of doing uh, to have these talks in Z33 around uh, a meeting table, uh, we want to share them with you. And uh, we will also put them online. Uh, we will, uh, there is a Z33 research website, which is online. You can already see uh, a small um, movie of yesterday and the longer one will come up uh, the coming days. So everything will be put online. Also the references, uh, the texts um, will be shared uh, with everybody and hopefully you also can participate in the discussion. Um, the discussion already started a bit uh, a time ago, uh, not only by discussing with Josef uh, about uh, certain things and issues that we were um, uh, trying to, to find out or clarify, but also with, uh, uh, and I just saw him entering Thomas Geisler and Tulga Baylor also uh, got statements that we will use as a, cert, uh, a guideline um, for um, this talk. Um, so, practice of exhibiting. Um, and we are trying to rethink uh, all kind of models and strategies of how can you present now design uh, and uh, why would we still present it, what would be the need, uh, what is the relevance of uh, doing that. Um, but uh, we were also at the same time talking and discussing this and uh, certainly we came to a strange, uh, let's say, title um, a title that had, uh, uh, which in itself is already problematic, uh, but it gave energy to a group of people, and we called it the European Design Parliament. Uh, just to to kick that off, um, we are, and maybe it's good to introduce you yourself a little bit first, Josef, uh, and uh, you're also part in a, in a kind of flying circus where I'm also now part of, uh, of biennials organizing exhibitions everywhere uh, around the world. And that is problematic, but it gives also opportunities. And there in that discussion, we came up with uh, the European Design Parliament. I think it would be nice first to introduce you I will try to and ask also people to be part of the discussion, not only, uh, and I'm trying to talk a lot because Josef almost lost his voice, um, uh, but okay, who is Josef Grima and why is he participating in this debate? So first of all, I must really apologize for my voice. Um, <laughs> it's uh, uh, not accidental, it's, I'm, I'm so intimidated by the prospect of having to speak publicly on such an august uh, topic that I think I um, subconsciously my voice abandoned me. Um, but uh, so, who is Joseph Grima? Um, I think the there are many different um, answers to that. Uh, I've over the last few years um, had the uh, opportunity and the privilege of working in the field of design, architecture, and art in many different ways um, and I think that that what is in a way what defines my practice that I've never really wanted to uh, limit myself to any single one of these disciplines but also to 
neither to any specific mode of production. So I, I felt at different moments and in different uh, contexts the impulse to produce exhibitions, magazines, books, um, events, um, and projects of other kinds, such as the one that's in the room next door, the um, New Asterisms. And I think that in a way this um, in itself, th this has been really central, the idea of not attaching oneself to any specific form of language or any particular mode of production, but actually trying to uh, evade, to be a moving target in a way, to not be um, easily pigeonholed into any single mode of production. Um, and also and with all the risks that ca that carries, I, I also realize there are many failures that accompany that. Mm -hmm. And al also not to one discipline, but more to related to topics and issues that are urgent today. Yeah, exactly. But, but I'm much more passionate about um, a particular topic than about a particular medium of talking about that topic. I think everybody, I think that's part of the, one of the, re I, I have a problem with the word curator because I think that it doesn't really mean anything. I think everybody in a way is a curator and I think the fact that it's so fashionable right now, this, this kind of glorification of the curator is, uh, extremely problematic because it's um, is something is a completely artificial notion. Curating is simply having an idea and talking about it. I think uh, what we're doing now is equally curation. It's about bringing certain ideas into play, certain past projects, certain um, un work of other people, and being curator is simply having an idea of talk. And you could do that with a magazine. You could do it with an event equally as an exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that maybe also to explain that last year's we already we always presented an exhibition or a part of an exhibition in Milano, and this time we thought, yeah, why why again showing something? Um, so we came up with this need that we had ourselves, and uh, and tried to share this forum of Milano, use Milano, and abuse it for. Uh, I think uh, where it about meeting people, talking with people, uh, sharing thoughts and ideas. This is in fact yeah, a tool uh, for us. Um, and then you could ask, talking, discussing, debating. Um, this is one form of. And now I come to uh, maybe the. Um, the European Design Parliament. Uh, the European Design Parliament uh, is something we want to instigate and uh, would like to, to start and kick off. But at the same time, the word European, the word Parliament and the word design are all three completely problematic. So how do we deal then with that? Well, we we had a strategy regarding the first, which was yeah. that uh, European, um, I, I think, uh, certainly speaking for myself, but I think also speaking for you, uh, we're not interested in uh, geographical definitions, and especially not in geopolitical definitions. And European mm -hmm. means everything and nothing, in a way, because there are so many, um, as uh, Stefano Boeri and Multiplicity, at the beginning of the book, Uncertain States of Europe, they had this very interesting project where they collected all the different possible maps of Europe, how you could define it as mm -hmm. a currency union, as a, uh, a political entity, as the radio waves um, that are used there, the uh, free trade zone, all of these different definitions. So European, by definition, means nothing. Um, I think the ultimate goal of this project is to create an open design parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a way, the creation of a European design parliament is simply kind of giving a leg up that will kind of piggyback certain political uh, uh, initiatives that are pre-existent in order to arrive at the, uh, at, uh, the the more ambitious goal of having something that is completely open and mm -hmm. pluralistic, culturally pluralistic. Yeah, but um, <coughs> the nation state, we agree on that. Uh, that is, uh, anyway, Europe is designed, it's a construction like Italy is designed and a construction in Belgium uh, as a country is designed and constructed. Uh, um, but the, the openness and the, the parliament where everybody can enter and uh, speak loud uh, and be used as a speaker's corner is, I don't, 
I don't know if that will be very effective. I try to be the devil's advocate. There is kind of uh, this open uh, debate that is going on, uh, but what what will we address? Why would we address stuff? And uh, um, yeah, I don't see just an open platform. I think we then I will use uh, the word curating. We have to curate the debates and uh, the talks there, otherwise it's not making sense. I, I think in a way the first challenge for this project is for the parliament to design itself. And, um, and it's completely true what you were saying, that parliament is an extremely problematic word because it's a, it's a legacy term in a way. It's something that derives from a uh, essentially 16th century understanding of politics in which there's a representative system in which a certain number of people are given the power to decide for others. And what I think is unfolding in front of us now is a, a, a migration towards a new um, system in which there is a more sort of liquid, uh, fluid form of representation. Mm -hmm. And so in a way the challenge for us is to actually design us our own, the, the first design challenge of the parliament is to design itself. And probably there's not going to be a definitive answer to that from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be something that will be an evolution. Yeah, I I'm, I understood. Somebody knocked on my uh, on my back uh, that we are already in our trip and that we are already in the European Design Parliament. Maybe a little bit back, big uh, big history, uh, because to to contextualize this discussion. Um, I didn't frame that well. Um, the fact that um, we were thinking, um, like I'm curating now Bio in Ljubljana. Uh, Josef was curating Istanbul Design Biennial, and uh, he will curate Interieur this year. You see a first uh, step uh, outside in the entrance of. Uh, uh, um, of the palazzo, and um, all these little elements uh, try to instigate a new debate around um, um, around design. So the exhibitions are a kind of platform for discussion, for debate. And then we met other colleagues, and you meet them uh, in uh, at these opening moments. You see them uh, fluidly. Uh, passing by, but uh, you never really get deeper into a, a certain discussion. And there we found or we thought it's maybe necessary to instigate or to uh, stimulate a debate that is uh, more profound and uh, a, a, a series of discussions that are consequently uh, following each other um, and building up a discourse a discourse on design, which is uh, where all kind of elements are changing now, but we have still old structures and old institutes um, that not always embrace this um, new thinking about design, and we have to look for new formats, new formulas, and so on. Sorry that my introduction was quite... Uh, um, uh, yeah, laconic, because I was immediately, again, where we ended our talk in the European Design Parliament. So this form, uh, this medium uh, of an exhibition or something else uh, is something where we are trying to, to redefine that. And um, there we came up, how d do we allow everybody now? in this group of people that we want? Are we then again building an institute uh, of, uh, and in 20 years we are with the same 20 people around the table and keep on discussing the same issues uh, ourselves of how will we set up these kind of representatives uh, of a certain modus or an attitude because it's almost an attitude. Yesterday we thought uh, it would be much more or better, instead of thinking about um, uh, the word that is used and misused a lot, design thinking, that it should be more be about an attitude, design attitude, at that parliament, or, and now I introduce a new, new word, platform, 
could could uh, embrace or instigate? I think the, the the word platform is important because ultimately what we're trying to do is to develop a way for the uh, current obsession with events to become a productive mechanism that's actually useful. Um, I think this book here, The Biennial Reader, is very interesting because it was the culmination of a process of evolution in which the biennial became almost the default mode of cultural production of our time. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Well, downstairs we have this project called um, FOMO, um, which is this kind of strange cart that maybe you saw behind the um, uh, this big balloon that unfolds. It's a trolley thing with two wheels. It unfolds and it has inside all of the elements that are necessary to produce a magazine in real time while an event, event is happening. And this project was inspired by Bruce Sterling who said that mm -hmm. uh, in, tweet, in a tweet he said that events are the new magazines. So this, what's interesting about this statement is that magazine, I come from magazine background, I worked at Domus for altogether um, about seven years. Uh, and what I, I began at the moment when the crisis of the magazine as a format really began to set in, and I ended when it was almost, I would say, over mm. um, in last year. And, um, and what's interesting is that in a place like Domus, you really see how critically important that, that, that format of, of production has been for the history of design, where <coughs> the magazine really was not simply a documentation, but it was, a, it was a, a platform for cultural production. And what's happening now, I think, is we're, we're reflecting on how, what, what is going to replace that. Is it the biennial that commissions works and that becomes a form of debate? Is it things like this, um, sort of the open discussion? Is it something like a, par a parliament? Um, and I, I think that's really still up for grabs like to, to actually define over the next 10 years what will be the most useful and critically um, acute way of debating design because it's clear that that's not happening in magazines now. Maybe mm -hmm. it's happening on the internet, but maybe actually it's more about events. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> If we are talking and debating design, uh, or maybe it's better to talk about talking and debating about issues where design can play a role. Uh, I think most of the time, and that's that was maybe also kind of problem uh, or uh, or is problematic is that we are talking too much uh, to quote Bruce Mo about the world of design instead of about uh, talking about uh, the world. Uh, the, designing the world uh, that is much more interesting. Tulga Baylor, uh, she came up with uh, a comment on one of the statements because if we, we are talking about that world, uh, we want to address topics and issues. What kind of um, topics? And she was quite uh, short in her answer and she said, leave out the economics. I'm, I'm, I don't agree with that. Uh, it's, um, but I know I shorten and summarize her um, her remark. Uh, she says designers should not be involved in economics. Get rid of that. Uh, she was quite. Uh, yeah, it's. it's um it's an interesting provocation, I think, but um, the point is that econ economics is the. It, that is, it's very. It's kind of what does that actually mean? Like once you subtract economics, what um, what exactly are you left with? Mm -hmm. um, economics, like politics, is everything. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, sociology, is everything. Mm -hmm. they, they none of them is represents everything, but none of them can be subtracted from the whole, and leave anything meaningful. So. Maybe she she meant a kind of uh, obsession for uh, making profit, uh, um, growth. Um, maybe that world, that kind of that part. But there is something that at this moment in society, anyway, and that is also what I don't see yet coming. Or yesterday evening, I was talking with Justin McKirk, and he said, "Did." This year, the crisis really arrived in Milano. 
at the Salon del Mobile. He was questioning himself. And uh, I think maybe the powers are now really starting to shift. And the powers, we also had a discussion about the powers yesterday with uh, Tobias Revel. And um, there, I think, we as designers or designers themselves have has to respond to this shift. FOMO, which we see downstairs, is, a, is an answer on that. Uh, do it yourself, uh, algorithmic um, magazine. Um, but how can a, uh, a debate or a discussion also uh, relate to that? I guess the, um, the idea is all that the, the European Design Parliament is essentially a node in a network. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that has to be in constant dialogue. It can't be a moment of synthesis. There has to be a moment of convergence um, in which it, it leaves open the doors to... It should be basically a gateway into relationships with all sorts of other modes of practice to the political world, for example. I think it's useful in, in its ability to create bridges into worlds that are, at the moment, uh, design is isolated from. And I think this crisis, the idea that the Salone is potentially coming to a, a, an end of an era is the expression of the end of an era in design itself, where design is only useful in the extent that it's, to the extent that it's able to build bridges in towards other disciplines. And I think a lot of the work that you have done at Z33, um, a lot of the things that have been discussed um, in these, these debates, both in this session and in the past, <coughs> relates to the idea that actually uh, design is something that is not in itself of any use at all, but it's only uh, useful as an instrument for being able to intervene in other fields. Mm -hmm. So something that in, uh, in the sense of, uh, I'm sorry to say, use this, this very beautiful table as an example, but something that is simply an expression of beauty is in crisis, but something that is um, critical as a, that is useful as a critical approach is actually flourishing. And I think you've done an extraordinary mm -hmm. job at Z33, all of you and Karen and all of the exhibitions, mm -hmm. in being able to uh, really highlight this design's potential to uh, take on board the kind of the critical, like the housing exhibition, the, the exhibition on the on mm -hmm. the dwelling that you did recently. I think was extraordinary mm -hmm. in its ability to highlight some of the problems within design as well as the success yeah, yeah. The, but uh, then if we do that there really lays uh, an uh, enormous uh, responsibility here is that uh, designers uh, uh, have to to solve the problems or ad address the problems maybe uh, that are around and that's a, a huge uh, responsibility um, we cannot we can think uh, and maybe change a little bit as designers, uh, but we cannot solve the problems of the world. Uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, uh, climate change. Tobias uh, Rivel was like addressing the fact that uh, he would like to do as a designer really a topic or a big project that is related to climate change. What can design do in the realm of uh, that issue? Uh, um, could you imagine that these kind of parliaments uh, are maybe addressing, uh, instead of just saying we have a, a parliament, uh, or I call it now a platform, but that we organize a platform that is uh, dealing with climate change, and that uh, that would be a kind of... Um, I just take one, one issue which is on, on our plate today, we will experience it. Uh, I think the problem is not only that design tends to be um, introspective, or the world of design tends to be introspective, but also the world outside of the design world tends to be um, hesitant or, or almost intimidated by the notion of addressing the problems through design. So there's this sort of separation between those who call themselves designers and those who are patently not designers and therefore would really hesitate to uh, take those methodologies. 
borrow methodology. So in a way, what could be interesting is to, for example, put a maximum quota of 50% designers in the, Europe, in the European Design Parliament and actually to say that the rest are a, a representation of every other field mm -hmm. in which, so one of its fun, fundamental functions becomes a sort of um, a propagation of the, an extension of design towards the outside world, but also the every other profession towards design, so that there can be more uh, sort of a hybrid, uh, hybrid approach. Yep. The idea of the European Design Parliament um, as a node in a network, as a moment to connect different things, to allow to dig deeper, to connect to the problems outside of the world uh, of design, but in the world, it also assumes that um, design has quite a bit of power if it's used in connection to these other domains. Um, do you really believe that, or, or is that a hope, or do you really believe that? I think in an absolute sense, I really believe it. Um, in a more pragmatic sense, observing it within the framework of the current uh, social, political, and cultural condition of Europe, it's extremely utopian idea. So it's, it's really complicated to imagine within the present social order how design can effectively enact social change. So, but at the same time, it, it, it's this very sort of strange paradoxical situation in which um, there's a sort of a cyclical loop between defeatism and utopianism. And in a way, I think the challenge for us is to actually set, um, in, in a way what we're attempting to achieve is perpetual motion, something that's completely impossible, necessarily. Um, but we have to be, every attempt to create perpetual motion until now has always been a trick. There's always been some hidden motor that has achieved apparent system with no loss of energy. And I think our role is to be the hidden motor that is actually putting energy into the system to make it work, even though apparently it shouldn't. Paul, so Graham, Paul Graham Raven uh, at the Future Everything Festival called this like, please make multiple little utopias, but make them for failure. Exactly. So we, that means also that we as oh. hidden motors uh, have a lot of responsibility to address, to, to stimulate, to... Um, and there at that moment, and now I come back to you, Thomas, you, uh, there was, you were saying, uh, I don't see any difference with other domains or other uh, people that have the, the responsibility to, to act and to, to take uh, a stance um, in your remark. The world is more and more becoming complex, so we, we have to do it uh, together. That's also more or less what was said here. Uh, we have to de develop a hybrid uh, platform, not a platform only for designers, not only a platform for uh, institutes uh, and so on, but uh, a platform for several uh, people. You were referring to the biennial reader, and it's kind of remark that I, I want to play a little bit the devil's advocate in, in this uh, debate is that uh, of course this seemed to be the, uh, a way of cultural production of production of meaning within the design world and then I also speak about art and architecture and so on but there is another problem is that if we do again other events around design eh, you have if you go this autumn you travel throughout Europe and you go down from London to Paris to Kortrijk to Eindhoven, slowly down to, and finally you come, uh, not finally, in Vienna and then you pass by in Ljubljana and then we all see each other again in Istanbul and then again another flying circus is invented which is called the European Design we left Euro already European flying circus. Yeah, the European <laughs> flying circus. So again, we are also, um, and uh, I already uh, can think of business models because all these cities like Saint Etienne, Eindhoven, Paris, London, they want these things. They want the uh, the the Vienna Design Week is called Vienna Design Week, and there is also part of. 
the um, the branding, the the uh, kind of being part of that uh, circus. I think this is a really, actually, an incredibly important topic because we've jumped to the point about what do we do about this? How can we make transform this? Interpret it as a useful uh, f format or something that can be contribute usefully to present thinking. But it's also, I think, really important to look back at how we got here uh, and the political history that produced the current condition. And it's, I think, really intimately tied to um, the, the kind of the rise of neoliberal politics, which are averse um, to large investment, long-term investment in culture, which produced kind of undermined relatively rapidly the investment of cities in large cult uh, cultural programs or long-term investments in institutions, the construction of the building of architecture, for example, and preferred much more to uh, stimulate tourism by investing in temporary events that had very little uh, overhead, uh, very little kind of long-term infrastructural investment, um, and therefore to kind of feed the cycle of struggling to outbid other cities for, which is also where the European, to some extent, the uh, European um, uh, cultural capital program came from this same idea, but in reverse, to actually stimulate cities in the long term to invest in culture. And I think there's something extremely problematic in this because it's produced a situation in which I think both of us have to some extent been victims of this, in which there's time frames have been enormously compressed. The kind of work that we produce is, if, if you're really, really lucky, you're gonna get maybe 14, 15 months to produce a major international biennale. If you're unlucky, it could be eight, nine, ten months. So there's an absolute kind of flattening of any sort of depth. Um, everything becomes extremely superficial and much more sort of, in Italian there's this word, um, eventi feature, the idea of kind of an, a, a factory of events where you're just kind of trying to make the most kind of headline grabbing, spectacular image possible. And it's extremely problematic, I think, in terms of the, the, it, in the, I think in the short term we can kind of speculate on how to actually make the most of this. But in the long term, I think it's going to produce a, a serious crisis in the depth of the work that we're producing. And for example, if you look to Asia, to Guangzhou Biennale, which has infinitely more funds than any biennale in Italy, in Europe, including Venice. It has more time, it's more structured, it's a, a, I mean, it's, there's just no comparison there. And I think for Europe, this is a major obstacle towards any sort of being, any sort of a protagonist in any way in the coming decade or two. So this platform parliament uh, that is kind of con uh, consequences of events that were a certain logic or a, an estafette or a cadavre excuse that is rolling through uh, through different places, different contexts, addressing different topics um, that are enforcing each other, that could be event after event um, without becoming bigger, but maybe deepener, uh, um, that could be a kind of model that that could work or that would be meaningful instead of... Uh, so you create a structure without... Um yeah, I mean, I think for me the most important, the, kind of the, the number one priority for this project is actually the word parliament, which on the one hand, of course, has a lot of negative connotations related to a sort of a top-down hierarchical understanding of politics. But on the other hand, I think it's a very important term, even if we kind of slightly misuse it in the sense that we're not proposing kind of a top, necessarily proposing a kind of a, a, a very sort of conservative traditionalist understanding of the parliamentary system. Um, the reason it's important is that it elevates design to a role of central collective importance, it's something that everybody needs representation through design, uh, and it's something that is, I think, as the, um, the parliament itself is a, a kind of a political, form of political representation, design is equally necessary, like actually having 
some sort of investment in design uh, is of critical importance. I think that's the first statement that's really important. And uh, I think it also is important because it does include, it, it has, there's an inclusive understanding. So it is something that is not simply a professional body. It's not the RIBA for architects or whatever, but it's something in which society in general is represented. And if we can achieve that, I think that's, I, th I think those are the questions that we should first be thinking about, about how it can be really a bridge to gain agency within every field of production, not simply our own sort of chairs and tables. We are willing to uh, broaden the scope. We say 50%, we, we're gonna go for a uh, quota, then we have a larger group of people that participate around certain topics, but then still, how do we share that? How do we um, uh, bring that in the real world? Um, I think my voice has reached the end of its uh, <laughs> autonomy, so I'm going to leave the audience to answer. But that is still something where we... Uh, I think that is still an issue where we, we have to find, uh, of course, what we do as um, makers, eh? because we are maybe not curators, we are maybe also just like makers, uh, drilling holes and, uh, <laughs> and other <laughs> stuff to, to set up uh, uh, these kind of moments. Um, we kind of jumped in into this European Parliament, and I think I miss a bit of information, so it's mm -hmm. like... Um, uh, getting some steps back. Um, for me, when, what you discussed so far seems as if we lost something in exhibiting, like the practice of exhibiting or all these triennales or biennales and mainly about design. Um, I wonder what it is that we exactly lost and that we're trying to gain in, in form of agencies. So that's okay. um, pretty important for me because it seems as if we are discussing some sense of crisis in culture and that we can distract culture <laughs> and gain it back, which I would say it's problematic. And the second thing is, if you're talking about these, about knowledge or more immaterial things, I wonder if we can exhibit it because displaying involves different um, interplay between the audience and, mm. and the exhibitor. Uh, the first remark is um, is about or not a remark, is are we losing something? Are we, uh, is something getting lost? I think uh, things are changing. So that means if, if society is changing, uh, the, the role of design is also changing. That means, it, and if I say society is changing, you see now that uh, um, the powers, like economical, who is the producer, who is the, the financer, the distributor, the, the communicator, and so on. These roles are continuously under uh, change. Uh, that's what, we, what is happening. Um, so the role design plays in facilitating uh, these kind of uh, changing roles in society uh, is completely different than uh, like five to ten years ago. Yeah, so uh, that means that the the form and the, the structure of um, uh, design events. Hmm? And events in the most uh, broad word, uh, from magazines to uh, exhibitions, if they are still can be called uh, exhibitions, or museums, or um, have to be rethought completely. So there we came up with, yeah, what could that be then? Uh, and then we came up with a kind of working title the European Design Parliament uh, as a as a platform to to share these concerns uh, to think about new formats. That I understand, but I wonder what do we exhibit there differently? Okay. You know what is you know what what else than let's say the table the beautiful table on the chair. Mm. Um, so so somehow we are I thinking about restructuring the infrastructure. Um, one of the first impulses for this idea actually came from looking at what is happening in the art world mm -hmm. and the specifically the model of manifesta which is an interesting format precisely because it's itinerant and because it has 
the ability to zoom in to certain uh, conditions around the European continent and even beyond the European continent that um, are critical. So to look through the lens of a specificity of place at something that is a kind of a macroscopic question for um, Europe in any particular moment. Mm -hmm. And with all the limitations manifest, some editions being very good, some being very bad, the thing that we observed is that there is no equivalent of that in the design world. And that's possibly precisely what is missing. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not too much to say that there is something that has been lost in the, the design as a form of cultural production, mm -hmm. in the sense that, um, for example, uh, as Jan said, I, I am now working on interior. Mm -hmm. uh, and in doing that, um, or before actually agreeing to do that, I took a very deep look at the history of this biennial. And it um, began in 1968, 40 years ago, 44, 46 years ago. And looking through the um, very early catalogues, the, the material that was produced, what became really clear is how the understanding of designs agency within society has been completely transformed. Mm -hmm. There's no comparison between the ideals that drive the 68 edition and the 2008 edition, for example. Mm -hmm. And so actually that became the driver of the whole project was to look at what happened. Mm -hmm. And in 1968, interior is interesting because it's a partly commercial fair, like Salone, mm -hmm. and partly cultural platform. And I think that this what it, and that's at the beginning the thing that actually really kind of put me off. And in the end it became the thing that was most interesting to me because what, in, what was implicit in this idea in 1968 was that design is actually about manufacturing in large quantities. It's about something that's market driven. It's about something that does involve um, the market and investment and uh, production of wealth. But that is not disconnected from the ability to intervene in society and to improve it. So the, the kind of belief of design as a social project that was embedded in the idea of design as a form of um, a, a, a market of, of capital production. And that has been completely lost. Now you have Salone, which is commercial, and then you have Istanbul, which is, uh, or Ljubljana, which is cultural. And that's just completely paradoxical idea. And we need to really regain this idea that we, through the activities of making tables, making chairs, making, that is not something that's disconnected from the cultural realm or from the political realm or the social realm. And we have to really bring that back to the foreground. And I think that's the central challenge for this parliament is to do that. This discourse is always introspective because you, you cannot make it understandable simply to the others. Mm. Uh, how would you solve yeah. this problem? But I can uh, uh, refer now to what is happening, and that's also partially an answer on um, uh, the, the, the first question, um, is how do you relate that uh, to the real world and how do you share it? Uh, because that is more or less your question. Uh, the exhibitions were, uh, until now, at least the most visible uh, part of this debate and mm. if, since you're saying that the exhibition is not a format anymore as no. discussion it's even you know, a format it's just one of the formats I think okay. and uh, if you look to what we are doing in fact in your part of it in Ljubljana uh, for me the, the process uh, that's bio uh, that is a, a biennial the oldest biennial uh, of design and secondly you have uh, interior a couple of years after so 50 years of uh, biennials now this year uh, and there uh, that biennial started as a competition really as a east eastern uh, europe western europe uh, competition and we changed that uh, to a collaboration um, a collaboration and that is where the process is in fact uh, for me more important than the product itself. The product, of course, I hope there is a nice and interesting and a stimulating um, exhibition itself or a way of exhibiting it or sharing it with a larger public. So you see that the, the modus of working uh, gets completely different uh, than instead of just flying in people uh, 
put things on a plinth. Uh, we produce stuff together with several people and uh, this will be, or we try at least, eh? uh, it's not easy, collaborating is, uh, but we also do it around a certain topic. So it's not just that we work together. Why would we work together? Um, I don't see any clue why we would work together. But if we have a, a common uh, issue uh, where that uh, what we can share, um, then we also know how to uh, who we has to invite to mm. to to make the group interesting, the debates interesting, and to construct something uh, that uh, that becomes meaningful for other people um, that we can share mm. and. How that we share that that uh, medium uh, that will fall come out of but that was also one thing we didn't answer yet because a lot of stuff that we produce like processes are immaterial are maybe imaginary maybe movies uh, other ways of uh, digital uh, communication are more effective uh, instead than that we keep on trying only. I, we still need tables and we still need chairs. <laughs> no discussion about that. Um, and we need new chairs and we need new tables. Also no discussion about that. But we also uh, have to incorporate other tools uh, to share um, these more ephemere um, modus of, of design itself. And in the beginning you said that the, you would rather say design attitude. Yeah. So what would be the essential uh, difference between design thinking and design attitude? I think it's, uh, I, I think Josef uh, pointed something, is that the moment you uh, um, uh, put, um, you use design as, uh, as a tool uh, to 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 tackle or to to invite people uh, to uh, to address a problem uh, and so on, then something else is starting uh, to appear. So uh, thinking is uh, for me very um, passive. Yeah, the it is of course it's a, a kind of a reflective mode, uh, but the attitude. Uh, uh, makes it really like uh, uh, that the doing is incorporated, that the doing, the making is incorporated uh, with... Um, maybe, yeah. maybe attitude just travels easier beyond the borders of design. Design thinking as a concept is so... Um, it, it deals a l fast with methodologies and with uh, certain uh, constraints that are... yeah. But if we put here, Line, uh, an object in the on the table and uh, we start using it as a tool, uh, then it becomes tangible. Yesterday there was the remark, what would happen if we had an introduction by images uh, on, on the... Uh, then we have a complete other... Uh, we use it as a tool uh, in order to instigate the discussion. I would just like to um, ask one more question about the sharing, the sharing of process. Still, we are doing events. We are talking about events, different kinds of events. So how, what would be the right media to show this process, to show these reflections beyond the event? Still, even Biennial of Ljubljana, in Ljubljana will end at a certain point. We are trying to make it a platform that will continue. But what would be the right medium for continuation not be, that goes beyond the publication or beyond the kind of echo debate. Do you see the, um, your parliament also as a kind of um, platform that would collect these ideas, reflect them, how it would work in reality? Difficult questions. We are still, it's like the, the first or the second discussion that we have about it. So really yesterday after the, the, the meeting, we had the same discussion. Uh, so it was really, um, uh, how do we uh, bring all these um, things together and how do we share them? How, wh how is also the, the, the medium of uh, uh, the media, how they are, how can we use them? Uh, and yeah, we didn't found yet. Uh One of the things that I truly believe in is um, if you get people to make a click in their heads, 
they're the best ambassadors to carry it forward. So maybe it's not about finding an outlet that is material that is out there, like a magazine or it should be in an archive somewhere in some shape or form. But maybe it's in it's in people's minds and the people that will take that knowledge further into a different set of events <laughs> in the broadest sense possible again in the future. So may, so so in a sense, I kind of truly believe in human capital in that sense. Okay. Um, before that, Maya asked me more practical questions. How we will uh, we try to escape? But um, I hope you will participate in the discussions that will uh, be going on online more. And uh, I hope to meet you once all in one of these imaginary design platforms um, that we will set up throughout the world. Thank you. <laughs>